Hello, everyone. This is the Red Baron. I'm here with Dan Din. He's joining us at the IGN Pro League office uh, to cast this awesome series between Curse and Reflex. Uh, this is Killing Spree, and it is tied up one to one. Um, I'm pretty excited about this final match. What about yourself? I'm glad that it's a lot closer. You know, I'm just glad it's on a stop. You know, it's yeah. back and forth, back and forth. Uh, of course, you know, after a point, it's just the advantage is pressed. It's just the nature of the game. It's supposed to snowball. So you know, let's, going into this one, you know, like still rooting for Curse. I think they're. I, I think Reflex is a good team. They just. Um, I feel like Curse just has a little bit more experience, but. You can't really tell until they do the picks and bans, because picks and bans in this game is just so important. I, I will remind everyone once again, um, we are giving away some stuff. So tweet at IGN Pro League, uh, you know who you think is going to win the game. You got this great uh, IPLT uh, sweatshirt here. Let me see the back. Oh, there we go. There's the back. So that's really exciting. And then we've also got uh, this mouse pad. I every time I see this mouse pad, I am just incredibly jealous. Uh, we actually are using it, and it's, yeah, if you want to pull it up. I think it's right here. It's pretty this nice. This is what it looks like. It's pretty, I don't know, it's, it's got a good feel to it. It's very stretchy, Yeah, it does too. have a really nice feel. It's like a fabric on top. It's not too thick. I have a really thick mouse pad for some And then reason. also, we're actually always looking for replays currently, uh, you know, try and put stuff together. So send us replays, iplreplays at gmail.com, and we'll send you that stuff. Uh, we are coming into the picks and bands. I... Honestly, I was kind of wondering whether ban Vigar. Here is actually the ban by Vigar, but it was by uh, yeah, it was by Reflex. I thought maybe you know they would ban Vigar through the series, but maybe you also pick a strong champion mid mm -hmm. um, to try and counter out that Vigar. I just don't yeah. know who would be that champion. Cassiopeia maybe would do pretty well, but if he lands his stun, then he still mm -hmm. has that great killing potential. Yeah, if he lands his stun, basically Vigar. He's more of a post 30 minute champion. His killing potential before 30 minutes, unless he snowballs, isn't as high. So, you know, like, you, you can do the Mao Kyla Blanc combo in Vegar still if it's not banned. If you look at it right now, um, they're, they're either going to ban Cannon or Mao Kai, just because Mao Kai has been a problem for them in the past. So, uh, let's see if game two has kind of like made them forget about Mao Kai and how much of a problem it is. So. Yeah, I, honestly, every time I see a team pick up Maokai, I feel like it's a win now. I mean, he's just, he's got so much that he can contribute as far as map awareness is concerned. Uh -huh. He's got devastating ganks early on. And then just the fact that he counters out AoE teams mm -hmm. uh, particularly effectively. You know, a lot of, you know, older junglers, particularly DPS junglers, they're more late game champions. They need yeah. to kind of get going. Maokai is just, you know, no matter how poorly he's doing, really, uh -huh. he's going to be contributing. I have a feeling Maokai is going to be picked by one or the other team. I feel like, uh, I don't. I haven't seen Curse play Maokai, so he, he might opt to just like play Lee Sin or something again. Maybe like, I don't know. Let's see There's what really let's see what Crumbs play. It really depends on the team comp, but. Um, it's wild, like all the junglers now, I, there's a ton of aggressive junglers out and they, they all do, are doing very well. They can have such a huge impact on the game. But I kind of, you, you look at bans and stuff like that, you'd have to ban out like four junglers um, to even you know, for to to get, yeah, for it to be effective. Ah, oh, they are picking up Maokai. So the whole plan was like, all right, Maokai is a problem. We have first pick. Let's pick Maokai. Let's see if Reflex picks up Grave because we know Cop loves Graves and Graves isn't banned. So let's see if they're going to, all right, you're going to counter me on Maokai? I'm going to take your Graves. But um, I, I really don't know the player well enough to see if like uh, one can play Graves or not. So I, I, if it was our team, I'd probably just pick up Graves. Because Graves is actually pretty tanky. Maokai ganks. You know, he has that extra armor, has that extra magic resist. He's not as deadly. He's got an escape built into his kit too. So, you know, I was kind of expecting Kennen and Graves. They didn't ban Kennen, they didn't ban Graves. So, you know, the trade-off is they get Maokai, counter us, but we get your Graves and we got the Kennen that we want. Yeah, and I think the big thing is, I mean, like you said, Cop has just been devastating with his Graves play, even though it didn't pan out for them game one. I was actually mm -hmm. about to say, they, I, I don't understand why they're not picking Kennen here, because I was going to say that they already have Maokai, they can pick Ramis a little bit later, but I guess they want to leave more flexibility so that they're not mm -hmm. uh, counterpicked as effectively. Yeah. You know, Kennen does fall off a little bit. Uh, just based off, off picks right bit. now, I feel like Curse has already won. Ramis naturally isn't that good against double AP, right. and... You know, you got that Kennen, you got that Morg, and even Maokai's AP. So, like, Ramis naturally builds a lot of armor because that's how his passive works. And, um, 
He's, he's just not going to return a lot of damage to people that attack really slow and doesn't hit really hard. Well, it's also, not only is Ramus not very effective against AP, but we've got some of the safest lanes in the game now. I yeah. Mean, Morgana, you know, you, it's very difficult to gank Morgana. You've got the Black Shield. Kennen has the uh, Electric Surge to get mm -hmm. out of there. Mm -hmm. Wh where is this aggression? I mean, Ramus is an aggressive champion. He needs uh, to be aggressive. How is he going to be involved in this game? Like, personally, when I pick Ramus, I hate it. I absolutely hate it when they have Morgana. So we're going to do. You can roll up and taunt a black shield. It's not going to work. And so that Morgana was a targeted counter pick to Ramus. Right? That cannon was a targeted counter. Or they picked it, so the other team couldn't pick it. But together, Morgana and cannon just have really, really high synergy. So like, I feel like picking that Ramus after Malachi, like you said earlier, was just a really, really bad choice in general. I am going to ask you here, though, because I always underestimate the power of Trend. Um, I. It's weird to me because I know he's going to farm particularly effectively against, you know, uh, Morgana, but if they send Kennen top, uh, maybe he, they can get some aggression. I don't know. Generally, he's going to farm okay in this game, I mm -hmm. think. But how is he going to get involved in these team fights when they have such great disables? Um, you know, is he going to be able to be effective? He does have a cleanse, and, you know, hopefully he's, he's running that. But w what what is Trin's role going to be in this game? Uh, Trin's role is basically... He wants to get as farm as possible. He's going to get to the point where he can just right-click them. And so he is running cleanse for Morg and Kennen and, you know, Maokai. They have enough CC that if he runs in the middle of everybody, even if he cleanse, he's going to be procced with another stun momentarily. Like, if he runs in, he gets stunned by Kennen, right? He cleanses that. By the time his cleanse wears off in whatever bonus, unless he puts the extra point into Defense Mastery, he's going to be stunned again by Morgana and potentially again by Maokai. Maokai would probably actually engage on, I'd say, either Graves or Zillion, so uh, I'd probably discount uh, the Twisted Vance, but he's running into just a massive, massive AoE fest, mm -hmm. and he's going to have to proc his ult immediately within like a half a second or a second. So just because, you know, they don't have to focus him, and he's still taking damage. So I feel like Curse just has a much stronger team comp. Mm -hmm. I feel like if Reflex is going to win this, they have to be dominant again. They have to pick up those early kills, and they have to control it. Where, Like, Trin has to get to that 40-minute build in 30 minutes, or else they're going to lose. And I think a lot of it's going to come down to the play of Zillion. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Curse, they do have, you know, if they were going with Kog'Maw, it seemed like they were going to go in a second. That would really be like a super carry support comp. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just everyone focused on just disables and damage and whatnot, but really focused around your DPS. But here, Caitlyn provides them with a lot more damage early game. Uh, they will have great pushing capabilities. Like, if they can just, mm -hmm. if they get an early advantage, they could just push down towers all day and Reflex would have a very difficult time stopping it because they, they can't run into the disables and then Caitlyn has the great range. But at the same time, uh, Zillion, you know, very strong in lane after he gets a couple of levels. And then they actually having switched out a Zillion. They picked Cassidy oh, they, instead. Oh, Cassidy. All right, well, there you yeah. go. I, that's a little bit surprising to me. I mean, I don't know. I Cassidy. I, I was very surprised as well because, you know, naturally, more just destroys right. Cassidy in mid. You know, push on her all day. There's no, there's no threat from the jungle, mm -hmm. right? Ramus can't really gank. And Cassidy is going to get denied really, really hard. So I was very confused when they switched that. Switch that up to Kassin. I mean, if Kassin and Snowballs, it could be a game changer. They're playing very, very high risk, high reward uh, comp, Reflex. Yeah. But the thing is, is their high risk and high reward, the risk factor is so much higher than the reward factor that they have to try, they, they have to make something amazing happen in order to win that early game. And it's weird because Cassidy is kind of a champion that relies on an aggressive early game. He yeah. you know, likes to roam a lot, needs that blue, but Curse, all of a sudden, they have this strong early game team. They've got yeah. Maokai, they've got you know uh, Morgana, they've got Kennen. How is Cassidy going to be able to get the blue? How is he going to be mm -hmm. involved against such a strong team early in the game? I, I feel like Curse has a stronger early game and a stronger late game. So mm -hmm. when you, you give a team you know, a stronger early game and a stronger late game, you have to somehow pull out an early game advantage, and that's really hard when your team's just weaker. Mm. Yeah, so there's just they they just picked against themselves. They could have picked anything but Cassidy. I feel because Cassidy naturally is really weak one through five, 
At six, if they're gonna have any hope of yanking Morgana, Cassidy has to initiate on Morgana and blow up the shield before Ramus even goes in. Or just silence Morgana and then Ramus can get the taunt off before the black shield goes on. Yeah, it should be interesting, though I feel like I always underestimate the power of Trindamir, and I, I think Kassadin, to a degree, is a little overrated. I mean, he's definitely a really strong champion. Mm -hmm. If Kassadin gets going, I mean, you know, that can be game over, just the mobility yeah. and um, the silence and everything. The thing with the Maokai but core build is um, it's Shirelia's Frozen Heart. Mm -hmm. You know, he gets to that Frozen Heart before Trindamir can get beyond his 30-minute, 40-minute build. Yeah. Then... Uh, uh, he's Trinimer's still gonna have a hard time. He does a lot of damage. Don't get me wrong, but just with the CC he has to go through to hit somebody, um, it's it's gonna be hard for him. Mm -hmm. He's basically gonna have to run in, tank everything, and ult. And the moment when his ult runs out, he's gonna die. And then, I mean, we've got to consider. Not only are we already seeing advantages potentially for Curse, mm -hmm. bot lane uh, Reflex has Janna, and Janna is kind of, I don't know, more mid to late game uh, kind of support. You know, very strong for those physical DPS, but be the lack of the heal could impact that lane a lot. Mm -hmm. Where I mean, I don't know if if they're trying to get an advantage, it would probably have to be bot lane. But I I, I see that lane going to Curse as well. I feel like. Bot lane, both bot lanes doesn't have a healer actually. Mm. So, oh, I'm sorry, who was on Curse? Uh, Yorick and Caitlyn. Oh, that's right. It the was thing Yorick. is, is Curse has a lot more poke yeah. for a non heal bot lane. Both teams has no healers. Yorick is able to poke damage without receiving damage, right? Yeah. Caitlyn is able to poke damage without receiving damage. So, what Reflex has to do is he they need to shield Graves early and get that early buckshot off and hit them really low to put them on the defensive early. Otherwise, they're just going to be poked all game and get denied really hard bottom lane. Well, I, we'll, we'll have to see what works for them. Um, you know, I, they, they do have some kiting capabilities uh, with that Janna. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know. It's It seems like they've got kind of a he melee heavy team. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not it's not melee heavy, but... Ramus and Trindamir as melee people, they, they need to be up in the forefront. They can't kite and still be effective. Yeah. So I don't I don't know how that's going to work. You know, particularly not only do they have the disables, but then York gives them a slightly more kiting capabilities. And then if they do, you know, are able to get someone down, York's ultimate, you know, just brings someone back. Um, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, if, if they can get an early advantage, then mm -hmm. they do have a very good snowball team. They do have, you know, Trindamir and Cassidy and Will Snowball. But Trindamir and Cassidy are definitely snowball heroes, but um, I feel like they don't have the presence to get the early snowball. I feel like unless Curse does some really, really dumb roaming at the level one where they give up like three or four kills again, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's, it's going to be a very, very tough game for Reflex. This Ramus, I feel like, is just not effective against Maokai, Kennen, and Morg. Even York, like, even their thought process in putting out York counters Ramus. You know, oh, Ramus rolls in, I'm gonna throw a golem. Ah, oh, you're not rolling anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if that's really easy to do as York. You see a raging turtle ball running at you. It's like, oh, I throw a ghoul at you. You're gonna crash into it. You know, it's just, just low threat in all three lanes from jungle. You know, Ramus runs in. Worst comes to worst, Kennen hits R, stuns Ramus, gets away, right? He can lightning surge most of the time, too. One thing that is interesting to me, though, um, Reflex, they are running Clairvoyance on Janna. So the heal, uh, double heal, actually, bottom on Curse, that's going to be really strong for Reflex to deal with. They're going to really have to uh, work hard in that bot lane to not give up an advantage early. But... If they can do that, then Clairvoyance, we've already seen Reflex tends to have a little bit more map uh, presence yeah. early in the game, a little more map awareness. Clairvoyance coupled with wards, you know, maybe that kind of map control can allow them to get the advantages that they need. Clairvoyance is definitely a really, really good team star spells, but at this point, right, um, they already have a weak lane bottom. Yeah. Right? You couple weak lanes with weak summoner spells, it's not going to go well. Double heal and exhaust versus mm -hmm. nothing. Double heal and exhaust. Basically, one team is just fighting to farm. The other team is fighting to deny. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, depending on how hard Curse presses, they might open up a gank opportunity for Ramus. Uh, so they, they got to balance the harass and their safety too. So, But 
It's it's a relatively low risk just because they have so much heals. They have the ghoul to stop Ramis. You know, they have the exhaust. So getting away is relatively easy. Being aggressive is also very easy. Well, we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. Um, I, I Honestly, I I see, you know, some of what Reflex is trying to do, but um, I guess it's, it's really just all going to come down to the game. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll just, you know, see what happens in the hey, game. Hey, who knows? Maybe Trinity gets, like, five kills in, like, seven minutes yeah. again. Goes and just two shots everybody continually, and that can happen. I'm, I'm a little skeptical, though. Well, Curse versus CLG, I remember. Um, yeah. in Curse versus Goose, they, they sent, you know, their AD and support top lane against Trindamir. And mm -hmm. they, you know, just shut them down really early. And then when Trindamir tried to go bot lane, then they had two people transitioning bot lane. Yeah. So they had a 5v4 at Dragon and were able to take an early Dragon. But yeah. then Curse versus CLG, uh, they did the same thing. And Curse just all of a sudden, like, I was like, how is Trindamir going to be involved in this game? And then he just ran wild. He was just, you know, picking yeah. up kills everywhere. And they actually stole uh, the dragon. CLG went for like a five-minute dragon. Mm -hmm. So really early. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm always kind of surprised by his, you know, Trinomir's capabilities. He is a very strong laner. If you give him a lane that he can, you know, succeed in, unfortunately he is laning against Kennen, who is a very strong harass champion. But, mm -hmm. um, I, you know... A anything can happen. It is, you know, the, I mean, we haven't even started the game yet. I so. feel like... Trinomir isn't going to lose to Kennen. Yeah. Um, actually, he has... Oh, he's not going aggressive Trinomir with Cleanse. So, basically, Valkyrie's not going to... There's there's two ways to play Trinomir. One, you play so aggressive, you kill the other person, and you put them low enough where you can just free farm. Or two, you go passive, and then you just farm until you're strong enough where you can kill him. So, he's going the passive style. So, what you know for sure is Kennen's going to get a lot of free farm top because... Um, Trinomir doesn't have the summoners to go aggressive on him. Just based on the summoner spells and the team comp, Reflex is playing passive on a comp that they need to play aggressive on and make things happen. So. Is this, is this all working in Chris's favor? Yeah, it's it's interesting because of the weak summoner's bottom. Uh, Graves is actually starting off with the cloth armor. He already has a lot of armor and resistance from his passive, of course. Um, you know, all those health potions will help him to farm in lane a little bit more. Uh, will negate some of that damage. So, you know, definitely a good decision. But you know, we'll see how that works out. Uh, Caitlyn will be at a little bit of an advantage with the movement speed for yeah. harass capabilities and. Um, I don't know. I don't know if he'll build it into a Riggles or if he's just using it for the armor. Uh, that could be, you know, just a, his call. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they swapped out some runes uh, just to live the lane better. If you, like, click on Graves, uh, can you see how much armor he has? 51. It's 51. I can't see what the bonuses are. I, I don't um, know. What I'm almost is. positive that Graves has... F he put on a bunch of armor runes in anticipation of getting out harassed. So he's using at least armor yellows with the cloth armor. No, so I, I wouldn't even be surprised if you put in like lifesteal quints too, just because. Mm -hmm. You know, you put in some lifesteal quints, you put in the lifesteal mastery so you can sustain a little bit. Yeah, that I mean, that is going to help him out a lot. Um, I, I think a lot of this game is going to come down to how Valkyrie does top lane. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, we do have the stun from Kennen if he, you know, lands his abilities and then the taunt and you know powerball from Ramus. If Valkyrie isn't able to spin out of there, then you know Ramus is going to set up a very easy stun combination like for Sidco. I want to point out is usually Ramus starts with defense curl when uh, they farm the jungle. Uh, Ramus this game actually started out with powerball, so uh, Reflex does know that they need to make stuff happen before it's too late. So one thing with Ramus is he can gank at level two if he starts with powerball, and that's probably what he's going to do. Ganking at level 2 means that uh, Morgana isn't going to have black shield. So I'm banking on an early aggressive play mid on Morgana before she can get that shield up. Because if you're going to kill her, you're going to kill her before she gets her shield up. He's actually going bottom. Uh, he will have an advantage bottom, but I don't know that I don't they have enough damage. I don't see a kill damage. converting. I don't um, see a kill converting. 
Double heal, higher level, because Bot gets double golem, so... He is coming way in here, but unfortunately Graves kind of had to back off a second because of the harass, but they do have Yorick very well trapped here. Uh, the cleanse actually from Graves to prevent that exhaust, but they can't seem to chase him down. They don't quite have the killing capability. Ramus actually powerball flashing into Graves, but there's the heal. They only used one of their heals, and now Graves is really in a terrible situation here. The Janna shield is going to get it, but there's the first oh blood from Cobb. Wow, he threw off the Piltover Peacemaker while Janna was throwing off the shield. And there you saw Yorick stopping the Powerball so that uh, Caitlyn could get a little bit more harass. And now, not only is Graves way behind in this lane, but Ramus isn't jungling. He's got to go back. Uh, and so, you know, naturally, Maokai's going to be a huge advantage. He's going to get to level 4 when Ramus is only level 3, and that's not going to work for their uh, aggression early game. One of the things with the Ramus is I was so confused on him getting bottom. What he should have anticipated is the double heal. He's only burnt through one, right? And if you look early game, Morgana was really, really harassed, right? Mm. Had Ramus gone mid, because I saw Morgana at about half hit point, with a, maybe a silence, a slow, and a ignite, couple of the Ramus in there and you can get some right clicks off too. I think he could have converted a kill on mid, which he didn't. Yeah. I was very, very confused. That's why I made the call that Ramus was going to gank mid because that was the most sensible place to gank. You know, you have the most pressure there. Uh, it was like the highest conversion chance of getting a kill too. Yeah, and I mean already, you know, Kennen's winning the lane top with Harass. We actually have Ramus coming mid. Um, I kind of missed that for a second, but uh, Morgana is able to get out of there. And now Morgana kind of is to that point in the game where it's very difficult to gank her. Uh, you know, I'm not sure that they're going to be able to get, get a gank off on Kennen either. Ramus is coming up here. But already we've got top and bottom at an advantage. And, you know, bottom is at a massive advantage. Like right here, there's going to be a gank top. There's, there's like about a 5% kill conversion just because Ramus' powerball is down. He does have a good angle, though. He's able to stop the Electrical Surge, and uh, Trindamir trying to get some damage off. They don't have an Ignite, though, so they aren't going to be able to pick up that kill. Uh, really just gives you know Trindamir some farming time. In the meantime, Caitlyn just throwing off that Harass under the tower. All right, one thing that's going to happen top is Maokai does anticipate the gank, so he's almost, he's ready for the counter gank. So this can be really, really good for Curse. Oh, Trindamir's definitely going to get caught in this gank, though. He actually spins away. I, th I thought that uh, maybe you know Maokai would be able to get in on there. He's actually powerball or uh, twisted advance into Ramus, and now they've got the slow. Ramus, Ramus is going to go down. Ramus. He is definitely dead. That's so, hard. All right. The thing with this is okay. Ramus already uses flash. That means his gank potential is really low. Not only that, but he ganked bottom and he failed. Now he's he's forced to gank top. I, I can already like hear what the team's saying. Hey man, I'm losing top. Can you come help? The thing hey with man, him, I'm losing mid. Can you come help? Hey man, I'm losing. Exactly. What's help? happening is he's already behind, so his gank or his threat is very, very low. Had he been farming the jungle normally, had he gotten his buff, um, or not even be behind, he would have been able to maybe do a lot more damage to Cannon up top. And when Cannon flash, he can flash on top of him again and maybe taunt him or powerball again and maybe convert a kill. So when you're behind and you're forcing ganks that doesn't convert. Your gank is just going to be increasingly weaker and weaker, and you're going to fall behind more and more. So right now, right, uh, Ramus is fodder. That's just how I feel about the game right now. Well, like, and, and Ramus as a jungler, you know, he, he clears the jungle very well early, but he slows down in the jungle. So we've got Maokai already two levels ahead of Ramus, and Ramus not able to get ahead in this game. There, he's, he's actually only one level behind now. But Ramus is going to, you know, he's not going to be able to get those levels as easily without successful ganks. This could happen. Morgana does have low mana, so they can convert a kill. Cast doesn't have a lot of mana to follow up, though. Uh, he is level six. He's going to be able to get one flash, but does he have the? He does have the slow. He's not going to go in for it. What happened was, uh, since they couldn't blow down the shield, Ramus had to wait for uh, Morgana's shield to come off before he blows the taunt. But Ramus doesn't have boots. Morg was just pulling the distance too fast, and really, by the time the shield wore off, he wasn't. You know, there's no time to taunt. There's no range for the taunt, actually. Now, this is interesting. Give me your opinion. Um, Caitlyn, you know, definitely very in much in control of this game. They've kind of decided to push down this tower early. Now, I know that they have an early team, and they want to kind of press uh -huh. their advantage early. But what I, I was kind of thinking that they might try and just hold the lane back 
and uh, start zoning off Graves and Janna just because they're so far behind. But instead, we see Caitlyn just clearing these waves, you know, just constant pressure on the tower. There's no point at this point in the game. You're not really like, hey, I need to catch up and farm and I need to deny somebody. What they're more concerned with is taking that early tower, giving them their team position and more farm so they can further press their advantage. Like, given Curse's position in the game right now and where they're at, it's more beneficial to just push down all outside tower, ward deep, take all the dragon, farm their jungle, and control their buff for the rest of the game. And having that tower down is going to allow for that. So, yeah. like, normally if I'm playing, like, a champion where the game's pretty even, um, sometimes I might opt to not push down the tower. Uh, if I'm denying, but my other team's losing, I might opt to not push down the tower. Because what happens is, if you're losing the game and you press down the tower, that means you can press halfway past the river and you have to go back. Because you're going to have threat from the other lanes. But in a game where every single lane is winning, you could press every single lane. Yeah, and that seems to be what they're doing. Um, you know, it, it's just a small advantage at this point, but uh, everything is just going Curse's way right now, and it, it should be interesting to see where this game uh, continues. Um, I, was, I was going to say something. I, I don't remember, honestly. <laughs> So, like, one thing you're going to see is you're going to see Morg just pulling every single creep wave. Like, Morg's goal is to just press the wave as fast as possible, have it push the tower. Because uh, Kassin is pretty good at last hitting, but, you know, having that extra tower hitting the creep is going to deny, like, at least a couple every couple of waves. So, you know, she's definitely going to outfarm uh, Kassin after a while. Actually, it's not too far ahead. It's only nine, but you're going to see the gap pressing or uh, expanding after a while just because... Like I said, it's really hard to last hit under tower. And she knows how safe she is, so yeah, you know, she can just comfortably do that. She's very safe. But I, I do remember now, we see great ward coverage uh, from Curse. Um, and that's the one thing, you know, the, the only weakness that maybe they could give up to Reflex is if they aren't careful with their, you know, map awareness early in this game and give up a quick kill. I am terribly sorry because we have Ramus coming in onto Morg, but that Ignite just barely wears off. And Maokai coming in here, not going to twist the advance on the cast. That would probably be pretty bad for him. Uh, but Morg able to play defensively. I'm surprised they got Morg so low. Um, but we did see Morg was throwing off shields whenever Cassidy was throwing off the silence. Like he was just silencing mm -hmm. creeps. So maybe, uh, you know, if Cassidy baits out that shield, then, um, you know, he, they can cancel it out a little bit sooner and, you know, get the taunts from uh, Remus. Yeah, like another thing bottom is, like, uh, I was saying, it's a non sustained bottom lane. So after a while, like, Yorick is zoning both Janna and graves if, if you're looking like yeah. you know like as a support york is able to zone a carry and a support by himself you now when when you don't have any heals you don't have any any sustain you can't exchange hits right because you're gonna hit him he's gonna hit you say you hit him for 100 damage hits you for 50 he's gonna heal it back up you can't and, and just look at this i mean we've got three towers almost down for curse here um, you know, they, they are taking this early game strength and they're just kind of rolling with it right now. They don't, you know, they, 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 don't, they don't have to press uh, Dragon because they don't really have great Dragon control. And that would be maybe one thing where Reflex could get an advantage if Curse goes for an uh, early Dragon and then, you know, uh, or a Dragon mm -hmm. when they shouldn't and then Reflex is able to steal it or maybe pick up some kills while they're distracted. So they're just very comfortable with just pressuring these towers and uh, just, you know, kind of pushing everything down. Like the thing with Curse is this, okay? If they want to get Dragon, they're strong in a group. They're not strong in small skirmishes. Say if it's like a 4v4, um, you know, I feel like Reflex can still win a fight. So they would have to group up. But and if they they're going to win a fight, this is where it's got to be. Kennen actually throwing off the ultimate. Trindamir uses his cleanse and his ultimate, but Kennen flashing over the wall is able to get out of there. But in the meantime, Crumbs is able to pick up that kill. And Morgana getting the Ramus uh, probably is going to be able to get out of there, just flashing away. But uh, another two kills for Curse when they started off at an advantage there, just not seeing the Morgana come in. They had vision of Morg mid, um, but weren't able to pick up uh, to you know convert those kills before she came in. I think it's at the point where they don't need to have Cannon to fight 4v5 anymore. Yeah. Just because the gold is so big. So I can see Dragon dropping in the next minute and a half, two minutes. Just because I, I can see Curse like grouping up, taking Dragon just as four man. And really, like, Reflex can't contest it at this point. And you here's know? here's the big thing with this Caitlyn pick. Um, you know, she's just one of the best uh, champions in the game at early tower control and just mm -hmm. using her great range to take down those towers. And because Curse is already at an advantage, 
they can't run into the team to stop uh, Caitlyn. Caitlyn can just stand there and say, hey, you know, you want to come stop me? Okay, come into this Morgana, come into this Maokai, come into, you know, York, who can help them uh, kite away from that kind of pressure. I'm actually a little surprised that Kenan went too. He's actually breaking off right now because he realized, all right, they're not going to contest it. They're not strong enough. This is a free dragon. We can do it four man. Because, like, the biggest worry is if you group up as five, Trinomir is going to give it up and he's going to get free farm. And uh, I think Curse knows this, so they sent Kenan up top and said, hey, we don't really need uh, Kenan, especially because Trinomir is still up top and we can take him 4v4. So he just went straight back top to farm. Because, like, the last thing you want to have is a free farm Graves Trinomir. has to watch out here. Uh, he's actually able to get out with the help of Janna, but uh, after that dragon, they are going to be able to take this blue. Oh, Graves stealing it with his ultimate. So um, I, I don't know, you know, that the blue buff is that big of a thing. I mean, he's going to have his ultimate up pretty quickly, so I guess he, m you know, might as well. But uh, he is going to be, I don't know, not able to get any kills or anything. So Yeah, so, like, the whole thing with them stealing blue buff, like, Graves stole it. Uh, sure is going to give Graves a lot more pressure in lane. Definitely not as good as having Cast and getting it. So sometimes when you're trying to steal a buff and another champion takes it over the designated person that was supposed to take the buff, you know, you didn't and really lose much. Kennen actually already using the Electrical Surge as Ramus is coming in and they are going to be able to take down this kill. There it is, a crit from Trind, able to pick up the kill. So that'll that'll help, help Trind out a little bit. Yeah, like well, one of the things I was talking earlier, if they're going to kill Kennen, he's got to use his Lightning Surge first because that's one less spell to proc a stun and that's also one less escape spell that they get. Malkai coming in onto Trindamir. Trindamir doesn't have his ultimate but I'm a little bit surprised since he knew that Ramus was still there and here we have just a ton of damage coming off onto this Malkai. Uh, Trin's going to back off. They're actually going to go for it. Chasing him down. Janna with the chase as well. Malkai's going to go down here. There's the Cassidy. And I I'm a little bit surprised. It just seems like really careless play from Curse. But can Cop get, pick up that kill? Oh, man, they're going to just be massacring Reflex here. Uh, Trindamir has to get out. Uh, Cassidy oh, will really be able to get out Cassidy. as well. This jump is down. I, he has too many uh, stacks on his jumps. Can't get the mana. So there's another kill. I That was tough. I, it's it, actually... I don't know if Maokai was trying to bait them in or, I mean... I, I felt like Maokai was just doing, having a terrible decision there to go in when he recognized he was at such a disadvantage, but I guess he knew his team was there uh, coming up behind him. I don't think it was really a bait. He thought he can do more damage because he knows Trinomir's ult was down. Yeah. So he overestimated his damage and he just took way too much. The whole diving thing, he wasn't too scared. That's why he stuck around because he saw two people coming from mid. What he didn't know is there was also two more coming from the other team. So he ended up a 4v3 and he died rather quickly, but... Uh, the thing is, is Curse is so far ahead that they were able to fight that 2v4 and still come out with three kills. And second tower mid is almost down. Ramus trying to get into this Kennen, but Kennen just doing a good job zoning him there until he runs into the creeps, but he is going to go down here. There's the Ignite, and Cassidy is into the fray, going to chase him down. Another kill for Prawley. Um, I, I don't understand why Curse isn't grouping up at this point. They, they have such a huge advantage. I feel like they could just decide to push down towers very quickly. And exactly. I, don't, I don't know how Reflex would be able to stop them. But by running around, splitting up, Reflex is able to get some of those kills on these Snowball Champions, maybe pull themselves back into this game. That's exactly what's happening. They are so far ahead that they're actually getting overconfident. Like, right now, like, almost most of the champions on the team can probably, like, fight 3v2. I mean, as in two players from Curse can take on maybe three players from Reflex. So they're, they're a little overconfident in terms of splitting up, which they shouldn't be. This can be a game that they can end in the next maybe five to seven minutes. But, you know, like being a little too overconfident is going to allow them to farm up, allow them to get kills. Like what you don't want to have is you don't want to have Cassidy getting those kills. You don't want to have Trinomir getting those kills. So uh, I, I can see them grouping up and pushing now because, uh, you know, as long as they just keep Trinomir at bay, like, the rest of the team can just push the lanes, group up, and then uh, push the lane, group up again. Uh, it still doesn't seem like they're grouping up, though, so that'll definitely be to Reflex's advantage. Though, you know, Reflex, uh, Curse does have a very strong late-game team. I, it just seems like they would press their advantage. Morgana using the ultimate on Cassidy isn't really going to be able to do anything. Uh, she oh, probably could have just backed up. Maokai actually going to try and get this kill onto Ramus, but that's not going to work out for them either. And Trindamir coming in, picking up the kill onto Morgana. Now he's going to be able to pick up the kill onto Maokai. And here, Curse, what they're doing is just completely working against them. And we have a five-kill swing. Like, all the last five kills in this game, 
have gone to both Trindamir and to Cassidy, uh, Cassidy and basically. Like, one of the things we're talking about that we're worried is, you know, Curse is getting way too overconfident. They feel like they can just walk over the map without the adequate ward coverage. You know, normally when you have this much map control, you ward deep, you have every single angle covered, and then you pick the other team off continually. The, the exact opposite's happening. They have ward coverage. Or I mean, they have map control, but they're not getting the ward coverage, and they're not picking off people. Instead, they're feeding the kills. So they're giving reflex a chance to catch up if you look at the gold gap is actually closing i think it was up to like seven eight thousand yeah. earlier so you know you, you let this happen a couple more times it's a very easy way to throw the game because graves is a very strong late game uh Cassin is very strong at picking people off late game and trinomir is really strong at picking people off late game so they're they're just I, I i don't know what curse is doing they're just allowing the other team to do whatever the heck they want and not only are they allowing Reflex to get some kills, but by splitting up, Trinomir just gets to sit up here top and farm. Graves gets to come down bot, and he's been farming quite a bit too. So it's, I mean, it's not like they're pressuring uh, Reflex at all. They're just allowing them to free farm and try and pull themselves into this game. Uh, whereas if they tried grouping up and just, you know, taking an advantage, then, you know, maybe Trindamir has to come back to his team, has to sit defensively in his base and can't farm. So here we have actually finally all five of Curse are coming up, but Mal uh, Malkai getting a little, little bit too close is taunted by Ramus. So he's a little bit low, but we do have them all coming up here. Trindamir is going to be able to take this tower down, but as long as Curse is really aggressive, they should be able to take this tower with Caitlyn as long as they can protect her. We actually have the snare onto Morgana and the ultimate almost picking up the kill onto Cassidy. And there's the Caitlyn ult. Janna blocks it, so he is going to have to back out, but. Here, the strength of Curse right now, they're able to kind of pressure uh, Reflex off the tower, though they are getting worn down, and without the heals to sustain their team, Reflex has held off that push while Trinimer gets this tower, and that's just, you know, stalling the game for him. That's, I mean, really not what they want. They will probably be able to get this dragon, though, but they will have to watch out because Reflex is coming down to intercept them. Oh, this can be potential really, really bad fight for... Good thing is Kennen does have his ult still, so it's not too bad. Curse I'm afraid because because Trinomir is very very strong right now. And there's Malkai coming in on the Ramus, and Ramus just has to back off. Yorick taking some damage, but he's fine with them wasting all of his abilities. Kennen is going to go down. Uh, Trinomir actually chasing after Morgana, able to pick up the kill, and he's going to be able to pick up this kill into Yorick as well. Once that exhaust wears off, there's the crits. He is going to get the kill. There it is. And Cassidy in the meantime chasing down Malkai. She's actually not going to go after that. Uh, she probably gonna could have picked up the kill. I feel like she has plenty of mana. She had the blue buff, but I guess they didn't want to over pursue. I, I'm not sure what they're doing. They're going for the tower. I really feel like she could have picked up that kill. I think what happened there was I felt like Yorick wasn't in the team fight at all. He kind of just ran off, got killed, ulted himself. Had he been in the middle of everything, he could have ulted either, say, Caitlyn for extra damage or ulted Morgana. Or just ulted anybody but himself, because he himself is a support. He doesn't do a lot of damage at all, so. And the big thing is that they all had to play extremely defensively because Morgana was already very low, didn't have the ultimate, a couple of them were low. So rather than, you know, standing up strong and dealing damage, they had to just run the entire fight, basically. Yeah, this game is just turning just... I don't know the the it's game so throw weird. in this. I'm I'm a little confused. It's, you're up five t five kills. You're up three towers. They were up seven kills. No, they? it was seven or was it seven to one maybe? It was seven, seven, two, two, seven, seven two. two. But you know they're they're up five kills. They're up four. They're up four towers. They're yeah. up a dragon. They're, there's so much gold ahead. All they had to do is just group up, have Caitlyn take down the tower when they engage. Cannon hits R. Oh, this game is turning bad really quickly because now I feel that Curse has lost a lot of their advantage very clearly and they're going for Dragon, which to me seems like a desperation move if Reflex good, gets a good engage here, but I guess they're trying to bait them in. Maokai taunting or Twisted Advance into Ramus. That's actually not a bad not, fight at all. I, it's it's kind of working out for them. Morgana is chasing after him, able to get the stun onto Graves. Can they pick up the kill? But no, but Graves has to get out of there. Trindamir in the meantime can't be attacking anyone, so they're just chasing him down, and this could be very soon a GG for Curse. They are able to pick up the kill onto uh, Trindamir, and they will be able to push down potentially for an inhibitor here, or no, they can take the Baron. Baron. That's a free Baron. The other team is way too low. The only way Reflex is going to get this is if, if they steal it with a smite, right? So Curse doesn't know there's a ward inside. So Ramus, as long as his flash is still up, he still has the potential to steal it. 
Or he can just do a drive-by smiting. He just rolls by, smite it. Oh, oh, oh he's getting zoned out. not going out. to allow that to happen. No, he's the, he's, don't see it happening. It's a free, it's a free Baron for Curse. And what I don't understand is Reflex, they had a ward on Baron. Can he steal it? Graves with the ultimate, almost getting it. Uh, but there's the kill, the snare onto Ramis. That's going to be a kill. Uh, but what I don't understand, Reflex, they had the ward on Baron, so they could, you know, they could just time when they wanted to engage. They yeah, know, exactly. They know Curse has a really poor Baron team. I mean, mm -hmm. Maokai, you know, he can tank for his team. His ultimate does help them out there. But Kennen, not a lot of Baron damage. Uh, Morgana, not, not a lot of, you know, not a lot of damage. So... I don't know. I don't understand why Reflex didn't just sit back for a second, let them take damage, and then engage. Instead, they uh -huh. went very early. I felt like they engaged about 15 seconds too soon. Like a good time to engage on them is when Baron's at like 30%, because that forces Curse to think, all right, should we finish Baron off and split our damage, or should we just run out? But by that point, right, Curse would have been low enough where Reflex can clean up. So I felt like, you know, like exactly like you said, you know. They just kind of went a little too early. They have vision of it, and they kind of just jumped the gun. And it's so weird because that seemed like that could have been a huge turning point for Reflex if they could have just cleaned them up if they get too low on Baron. Uh, but now, all of a sudden, Curse has that hu huge advantage back in their favor. They're up 6k now, but the Baron and then having all these towers already down, if they can pressure it and get a couple more towers, potentially if they get this mid tower, it's already at half, um, then they could just, you know, slowly push for the game. Mm -hmm. I feel like at this point, they can just control the rest of the map. Um, if they want to play safe, they had the potential to end the game probably like a couple minutes ago. Um, they kind of lost that. Maokai actually twisted advance into Graves, and Graves goes down very quickly. Ramis trying to taunt Caitlyn there, but not going to happen. And they, I don't see a way for Reflex to defend this tower now. Uh, there's the tower. They're going to be able to get the inhibitor. And this is what we were talking about. Uh, Curse can just kind of stall this. I mean, not stall this game out, but like just slowly you know, drag it out, take towers down, just keep on pushing. And Reflex won't really have much uh, mm -hmm. that they can do about it. Like the thing is, is Reflex has one wave clear, right? Janna can't clear waves, Casting mm -hmm. can't really clear waves, neither can Trinomir and Ramus. So you're solely relying on Graves to clear a wave, right? So when Graves run up to Buckshot, the range isn't amazing. And the angle it goes, sometimes you can't even hit a lot of creeps. That was a really good ghoul, by the way. Yeah. And that's exactly what you said earlier. Uh, York, just the perfect counter to Ramus there. Oh, but Trindamir is caught, but I, I'm not sure that this is a great situation. We do have it four is a people. Good situation. Actually, it's Trindamir does have to back off. Oh, his ultimate was down. I, I thought his ultimate might have been up. Uh, but actually, this is going to be huge, and this is probably going to be game. I, I thought 4 for 4 would help Reflex, but I didn't realize that Trindamir's ult was down. Uh, Trindamir's ult just went down. They, they uh, twisted advance and focused him, then he used it. Oh, so okay. it was actually up during the fight, but since he got focused so fast, he had to use it instantly, so it really didn't do him much good. The super twisted advance. Malkai that is was going to go really down here, risky. but uh, they're actually not going to be able to pick up a kill on the Graves. He was very close, and now Trindamir is going to be chasing down this Yorick Sum, not the person he wants to be targeting. Morgana chasing after them, able to pick up the kill on the Trindamir, and there goes Graves. That's and game. And that, this is going to be game. That was almost a good uh, initiation for Reflex. They were able to get the over-pursuit from Malkai, um, able to get some damage in, but a little bit too aggressive by Trindamir. And uh, this is actually going to be game. Elements maybe going to go down? No. Curse able to finish it off. Uh, so congratulations to Curse taking this series 2-1. to one. And now Curse, they're on a two-game killing spree. Uh, so next week is going to get them, you know, the killing spree, get them that, you know, kind of bonus prizing. Uh, so that should be pretty exciting. But, you know, congratulations. Any thoughts? Any thoughts? Oh, my God. Such a vague, just generic question. I, uh, and I, I think, I, I mean, we, we talked about it in the champs. Like, I, that's, I felt that's like where I, it started. I kind of felt like I went through all of it just purely based off of the team comp. You saw, like, the snowball they did, just the lane dominance across all three lanes is because each pick was just so much stronger, respectively. You got the Yorick stopping the Ramus ganks. You know, you got the Morg just constantly pushing on Cassidy. And really, you can't gank any three lanes. I felt yeah. like if Reflex was going to make it, they should have started from that level two gank. They opted for Powerball over defensive ball curl mm -hmm. just so he can get Powerball and taunt level two and get that gank off. You saw Morgana mid with about half hit point. 
That was a perfect opportunity. You run in, you roll onto him. He's level one or two. He can't shield that. Yeah. Because you go pull and you go binding level one and two. So even if he hits level two, you can't shield that. You know, you're taking 100 damage from Powerball. You're getting like right click two, three times. That's like another 200 damage. You're getting a silence, you're getting a slow, and you're getting ignite. You know, Morg has what, 600 hit point? He's taking five, 600 hit point or damage already. And it just, that kill didn't happen. And he went bottom and he died instead. Or he didn't die. Graves died. Yeah. And just, just that putting him behind too. So, And half of the issue, uh, you know, we saw, I mean, not only was there kind of poor execution there, but in champ select, the Ramus second pick after Maokai was already picked. I mm -hmm. mean, they knew that if they wanted to take Ramus, they could take him a little bit later. But then, you know, leaving the Kennen open when Kennen is a very strong yeah. pick, uh, having the double AP, you know, their, their whole team countered Ramus just yeah, so exactly. effectively. Exactly. I don't know. When they, they could have maybe held it off some, decided a little bit later on how they wanted to counter them. I, and I still think that, you know, maybe Zillion probably would have been a better decision. I mean, Kassadin does have more of that snowball, but... You know, the the bombs, uh, the lane control with Zillion, and then also the ultimate to couple with Trindomir, uh, that could have given them some nice fight control. I think Zillion would have been a fine pick. I just cast it naturally is, is countered by Morgana. You can't really do anything. Yeah. So I felt like anything <laughs> but cast it in. But the cast in really helps on the snowball. But, yeah. you know, at that point, I think they're just really desperate. You know, as the last pick. All right, what can we... All right, we... we they knew they got out comp terribly. I was like, all right, we got out comp really, really, really hard. What can we do to give us maybe hope? All right, let's do Trinomir. Let's do Castanet, you know? Like, just really, really snowball -y champion that requires a lot of early game advantage to pull them into mid-late game that, well, clearly didn't happen because every single lane was just relatively weaker. Right. Well, uh, I guess there it is. Uh, congratulations to Curse. Um, excellent play. It was a pretty interesting series. Uh, Reflex was able to take game one in pretty dominant fashion. So, yeah, pretty dominant. Uh, it was nice to see Curse, you know, turning that around. The next game, just fantastic play. Yeah. Lots of, you know, uh, excitement. I mean, Vigar just really able to, uh, you know, pick up some easy kills. Yeah, yeah, lots of easy kills. So there it is. Uh, everyone, tune in next week. We will be, you know, streaming again Thursdays at five. And I believe uh, I, I don't want to say for sure, but next week we may be transitioning into live. So, um, you know, that should be pretty exciting if that's the case. But definitely tune back and tune in to ign.com/ipl for more action. Uh, once again, I am the Red Baron. You can check me out on Twitter at, at @baroncast. You can check out IGN Pro League at IGN Pro League. This is Dan Din. You want to do any shoutouts? Uh, I think a shout out to Darius. Uh Shout out to West Rice. Dyrus again. Get him that money. Shout out to Dyrus. Oh, I think I sh Yeah. Shout out to Dyrus again. That red blanket over his head. Like, Eskimo Dyrus is way too cool. Someone, someone shout out to Saucy. To I'm taking you down to 1900. Uh, shout out to Nyan. Just basically my entire team. Shout out to the fans. Uh, anybody that watches me. Oh, I will say, though, uh, for the fans, South by Southwest coming up in March. I think it's March 9th. All of Epic basically is going to be there. So yes, congratulations yes, to that. That'll yes. be a lot of fun. Um, you know, so you guys can tune into that as well. But supporting Epic, uh, you know, thanks for coming here. It's oh, been yeah, a no pleasure. Problem. You know, we had you all day. Yeah, yeah, you guys had me. Oof. <laughs> from 4 o'clock, I feel like I worked the entire day. Woke up early in the morning for 4 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just kidding. But it, it was, you know, really nice to have mm -hmm. you on here. Once again, thanks. And everyone tune in next Thursday at 5 o'clock. And also uh, check out our channel, youtube.com slash IPLLOL. I'm just throwing out so many names here. Yeah. Uh, youtube.com slash IPL Academy. We're, you know, doing a pro tip series. I'm sure we'll have all these in text or whatever. Um, you know, we, we will have, like, more beginner stuff. This actually, this, um, we are running a series on Wednesdays as well for you know, kind of like uh, lessons and improving your play. Uh, I I'm, I'm want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. I've just been rambling here forever. Yeah. Uh, but thanks a lot, everyone. You know, uh, tune in next week, and I hope it should be a pretty exciting match. I'm not sure who Curse is going to play, but uh, regardless, it should be a lot of fun.